Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, your monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Later in the programme, I'm in Rotterdam to see how the city keeps its feet dry as sea levels rise. But the water is coming from this side onto the wall. Nothing can happen. It's that solid and that strong. But first, let's have a look at the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, September 2019 was 0.57 degrees Celsius warmer than the 1981 to 2010 average, as warm as the warmest September ever in 2016. It was warmer in much of Europe, the US, the Arctic, but that wasn't the case everywhere. Here you can see that in Norway and Sweden, southwestern Russia and the Central Asian republics, it was cooler than usual. Now let's have a look at the oceans and the ice-covered parts of our planet. Now normally Arctic sea ice hits its lowest annual levels in September and last month was no exception. In fact, September 2019 saw the third lowest sea ice levels on record, shown by this line here in blue and the line in red shows the historical average for the same period. Meanwhile, the latest IPCC report says sea levels are currently rising at 3.6 millimetres per year. And that rise is accelerating as land-based ice masses melt and, of course, the oceans expand as they get warmer. And we have projections of sea level rise of one metre or more by the end of the century. And that is a climate change effect that directly threatens cities all around the world. So how can they adapt? Well, I went to Rotterdam to see how they're coping. This is the world's biggest storm surge barrier, the Meisland Kering in South Holland. 22 metres high, made from thick steel, it defends a huge part of the Netherlands against the sea. When the storm is coming in, you get a storm surge. Water comes up higher and higher. If the water comes up higher than three metres, then it's going to be dangerous for Rotterdam. That's the time the barrier closes. The barrier helps protect the large areas of the Netherlands which are below sea level. The gates have only had to close to prevent flooding twice in 22 years. However, with rising sea levels, the barrier may need to close as often as once a year. And each day the barrier is closed costs the port 10 million euros in lost revenue. So to adapt, port authorities are building facilities on the coastal side that can operate in almost all climate conditions. This delta city uses dikes and dams to keep the water at bay and is testing new ways to manage excess water. Rotterdam is feeling the uh, rise of the sea level. We build uh, water storage capacity because every drop of rain which falls on the city has to be pumped out. Otherwise, we have wet feet within the city. Water storage capacity can take many forms and one of the most innovative is this, the rooftop farm. It can hold 60 litres of rainwater per square metre, offers natural cooling and insulation and a unique place to grow food. It's incredible that you can go up in your own office in the green space. So that's the first benefit, is, is the nicest one, I think. The second one is, uh, of course, the water storage, because water storage is very important for the city. And the third one is uh, you can do something about uh, the heat island effect. Another way to adapt is to explore new ideas of using open waterways. This is the floating farm where 35 dairy cows live on a floating platform on the dockside. Next, they plan to raise chickens and grow fruit and vegetables. Why not produce food on the water around and in the city? Because when you are on the water, you are climate adaptive. You go up and down with a tie. The Dutch believe their barrier is good enough until at least mid-century. As sea level rise accelerates, you have to ask, though, are they ever afraid? It's not fear of the water, it's calculate what water can do. We know what it can do, so there's a lot of respect for water. But we say, we're very proud to say Dutch people fight against water, but also work together with nature to make sure we can do everything right in the future also. Well, that's all we have time for. You can find out more and see the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.